Hello there math lovers, so again this is Larry M. Del Rosario and for today, we will be discussing topics on number theory. To be more specific, it is all about the Fermat's Little Theorem or FLT. Before we are going to proceed with the form of the Fermat's Little Theorem, let us first discuss when are we using Fermat's Little Theorem. Okay, so we are using Fermat's Little Theorem to determine or find the least residue of a large number or to find the remainder when dividing by a prime number. Fermat's Little Theorem states that if we have an integer raised to p minus 1 divided by p, it will always yield with a remainder of 1 or simply 1 mod p where p represents a prime number that's why it is p and a represents any number or integer except 0 and must not be a factor of p that means a and p must not be the same number okay when we talk about prime numbers these are the numbers that do not have uh, a factor aside from one and itself okay again Fermat's little theorem states that uh, a raised to p minus 1 divided by p will always yield with a remainder of 1 or 1 mod p for those who are not yet familiar with mod this is what we called modulo so mo we are using modulo in Fermat's little theorem so what is a modulo okay in order for you to easily understand how Fermat's little theorem goes let us have a basic example of finding the remainder when we divide two small numbers let's say for example we have 7 divided by 5 okay we are going to divide 7 by Five. So we have 1. 1 times 5 is 5. We are going to subtract 7 by 5. So we'll have 2. So our answer is 1 remainder 2. Or 2 modulo of 5. Okay. 2 is the remainder. 5 is the divisor. That's how we write the modulo. Okay. 2 the remainder followed by the mod followed by the divisor equals the quotient okay so in order for you to easily understand how Fermat's little theorem goes in finding the remainder of an integer raised to p minus 1 divided by a prime number let us have an example okay let's say for example we have 2 raised to 4 divided by 5 you have noticed that 5 is a prime number. Also, you have noticed that 2 and 5 are different integers. And you also have noticed that 2 is raised to 5 minus 1. So it is in a form of a raised to p minus 1 divided by p. So as stated by the problem, as stated by the theorem, it, it should have or it must have a remainder of 1 okay so that definitely or our answer will be one modulo of five where one is the remainder and modulo of p or the divisor okay let us verify whether our answer is correct two raised to four is equal to 16 16 divided by five is three remainder one that means it is always have a remainder of one where one is the remainder module of five is the divisor another example let us have three raised to six divided by seven you observe that seven is a prime number three and seven are this are different numbers or integers three raised to six is three is raised to seven minus one which is six so all our answer will definitely be 
k so that is 729 3 raised to 6 is 729 divided by 7 we have 104 remainder 1 or simply we are going to put it in a form of modulo so we have 1 definitely the remainder modulo of 7 we're just going to change 5 by 7 okay example number 2 Okay, how about 2 raised to 2003 divided by 11? Okay, this problem cannot even uh, evaluate by a calculator. That means we cannot count it manually. Okay, but we can still apply the fermat settle theorem here. How come? So as you notice, our P or the divisor is a prime number. 11 is a prime number. 2 and 11 are different integers. Okay, but... 2 is raised to 2003. 2 must be raised to 11 in order for us to have a remainder of 1. Okay, so all we have to do is to write it in a form of 2 raised to 10 divided by 11 so that it will become 1. Okay, so all we have to do is to write it in this form. So we are going to divide the exponent by 10 2003 divided by 10 is equal to 200 remainder 3 and we are going to rewrite this in a form of 2 raised to 10 raised to 200 okay so that is equal to 2000 we still have a remainder of 3 so we are going to multiply it by 2 raised to 3 to make it equal to 2 raised to 2003 divided by 11. Okay, so as you notice, 2 raised to 10, 2 raised to 10 can be converted in what into 1 because it is already already uh, in a form of the Fermat's little theorem. Okay, leaving us with an exponent of 200. Okay. 1 raised to 200 or times 2 raised to 3 divided by 11. Okay, so as you notice, 1 raised to 200 is simply 1 times 2 raised to 3 is simply 8 divided by 11. So that is 8 divided by 11. In modulo form, if our quotient, if our dividend is already smaller than 11, definitely that dividend will serve as the remainder of as the remainder of dividing the two numbers. Okay, that means 8 is the remainder. It could be written in a form of 8 modulo of 11. The remainder of 8 modulo of 11, which is the P or our divisor. Okay, so in order for you to, to easily to appreciate how Fermat's little theorem was used in a real life situation, let us have a problem, example problem. Okay, in example number three, if today is Sunday, what day is it after five raised to 2019 days? Okay, so as you notice, if you are going to evaluate 5 raised to 2019, that's a big, big number or a huge number. Okay, and it cannot be evaluated by a calculator. Okay, so, and you have also noticed that in, in the problem, it is as what day is it after 5 raised to 2019 days? How many days do we have in a week? We have 7. And you also notice that 7 is a prime number. So when we divide 5 raised to 2019 by 7, okay, the remainder, we are just going to count from Sunday. okay, And that will be the day after that particular Sunday. Okay. So 5 raised to 2019 divided by 7. Okay, first, we are going to subtract 7, 1, but 1, 2, 7. So we have 6. So we are going to divide the exponent by 6. 2019 divided by 6, we have 336 remainder 3. 
we are going to rewrite 5 raised to 2019 in a form of 5 raised to 6 raised to 336 times the remainder, because we still have remainder, 5 raised to 3 divided by 7. Okay, 5 raised to 6 is equivalent to 1 raised to 336 times 5 raised to 3 divided by 7. 1 raised to 336 is simply 1, leaving us with 1. 5 raised to 3 is 125 divided by 7. Okay, when we divide 125 divided by 7, we'll have a remainder of 6. Because 5 raised to 3, 125 divided by 7 is simply... Um, it's all about... 125 divided by 7, that is 1, 7. So we have 5, so 55, that is 9. Okay, so we have a remainder of 6. Okay, but that will not be our final answer. Our final answer, we are going to count, since this is the remainder, 6 days after Sunday. So we have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So our answer is Saturday.